all right my friends so i just want you to know that you have access to the playlist for the men stack tutorial for beginners right here on youtube so if you want to watch everything on youtube there's a playlist here on youtube that's going to give you access to them but i also want you to know that i'm going to be uploading the beginners tutorial one per day so but if you don't want to wait for me to finish uploading everything then you can just click on this men free course and then it's just bring you to this page where you can register for the men tutorials for beginners absolutely free so you're not paying anything it will give you access to this comprehensive course dashboard where you're going to just learn everything you need to know about the beginning uh, part of men all right then also i'm going to be publishing a next year's course also for free and you are going to get access to that if you are on the dashboard if you're on this platform also if you like to get access to the 26 plus hours full stack men course then i'll leave a discount link in the description of every of the men video and you can get access to that for just this tiny discount all right thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video all right so now we have access to the data that we are sending in the request body in our case it's just the json data so at this point we can go ahead and actually save this data to our database but before we do that let me show you another way you can send data in the request body so instead of just choosing json here i can choose something like form url encoded if i select that it will show me um this option here with name value key pairs so in this case here i can just come here and then say name which is like the name of the task and then the value is just going to be task one and then i can go ahead and send that but if i do that i'm still going to get an error so watch if i send that um okay so i think at this point i'll just get rid of the i'll get rid of the logger function i've saved it inside its own branch so you can have access to it on the github file and I also get rid of that function here. So here we just have the console.log of the body and we're sending tax created. So let me go ahead and save this guy again. All right. And here I'll just fire out this one more time with this form uh, URL encoded. If I send that, watch what happens. So you see, I just get this empty object here right so this is one of the problems we had before now we can actually use another middleware so i'll come here and say app.use and you know the middleware that i'll use to be able to get access to this form url encoded data well the name of that middleware is just going to come in i'll just come in here and say express and i'll say dot url encoded it's an object so i'll just open it up like this and inside I'll just specify the property. The name of the property I need to specify is extended and I'll set it to false. All right. So by adding this midway here, I can have access to this form data coming from the body. So I'll go ahead and save. Oh, let me save that. So I'm waiting for my server to start. All right, go, I'll go ahead and fire off this one more time. So I'll fire it off. And you see here, we get the name and the task one. All right, so that's about it. So I just wanted to show you a different way that we can send data from the body. So I think I prefer this one because, I mean, it's a little bit more organized. So now let's proceed to save the data to the database. I don't need to you do this console.log or this whatever here. So I'll just get rid of it. And then I'll just add a try catch block. So try catch. So now in this try block is where I'll first attempt to store my data to the database. If everything is fine, it will be stored. If something goes wrong, then I'll catch the error. So let's come here. And here I'll come here and say const task. And that's going to be equal to await. So there is a method that we can use to save. There is a uh, mongoose method that we can use to save information to our database. But remember, we need to use this task model 
to you know structure that information and save it to the database this task model contains the name and completed from this form here in our body we are sending the name property but we are not sending the completed property however we set a default to false so even if we don't set a completed property here the default will be saved to the database all right so just know that you must must add the name and the default will be automatically set to false in our database so first off let's import this task inside of our server.js so i'm just going to come here and import that i'll just say capital letter task and you see here i can auto import it so that's it right there now i'll save it to the database so i'll say await and then i'll use this model to save something to the database so how am i going to do that i'll come here i'll say await task capital letter t dot create so i want to create something in the database now this um parenthesis here is where we now specify the data that we want to send to our database and remember that data is in our request dot body if you remember correctly then when i do this i want to now you know return that body of data so that i can just see it here that okay that data has been saved so i'll come here i'll say response dot and this time i'm going to say response dot json so it's not response dot send this time it's response dot json and in this response json i'll just return this task or i'll just display this task so just come here and paste that in now what if there's an error well if there's an error i just want to return the error message now but before we even do that there's something i just want to bring to your attention if you notice when we fired off this um http request it gave us this 200 this status of 200 which is okay well we can actually specify the status with our response okay so instead of just saying response.json i can come here and say response.status first and then i'll specify the status so in our case it's going to be 200 so if the res response is favorable or if it's successful then i'll give a status of 200 and then i'll then go ahead and send back some json data which is what we're getting from here as task however if there's an error then i'll come here and say response dot status so first of all specify the status and i'm just going to use 500 which stands for like an internal server error then i'll send some json data now this json data i'm just going to you know pass some data here and i'll just maybe pass an error or maybe msg message so let me just pass some message back to the user and then i'll just say error dot message so here i'll say error dot message and this error dot message is coming from this error object here i just put it inside an object with a property name of message that's all i did okay great so at this point i think we can test out our api specifically just to make sure that it saves something to the database i'll go ahead and save and i'll come back here let my server restart all right great and i'll come back here and i'll try this one more time so let's go ahead and send voila so you see now we get a different um response here so you see name task one completed set to false there is one other information here that we got and that's the id underscore id this id is actually automatically created by mongodb all right then lastly we get this created at and updated at okay this v don't worry you don't need this these are the these ones up are the important information that we need to know so created that is my current date updated that is also the current date all right great now let's go to the database and make sure that this is actually stored in our database so i'm just going to minimize this and come here open up my database maybe i'll just expand this browser and i'll go to browse collection so i'll click on browse collection and let's see 
all right so it says retrieving list of databases and collection aha this is it so now you see here that we now have this collection task manager and if you remember when we in our dot env file let me go back to my dot env file because i want you to know exactly everything that is happening here in the dot env file remember we give this um collection we added this task manager text here and i told you that that's going to be the collection name or the name of the folder in our database well that's what you see here so you see here we have task manager if you click on this guy to just collapse it if you click on it it expands it and inside of there we now have this tasks plural if you now click on this task you will now see the tasks that we saved which is this one task one all right now where is this text tasks coming from well it's simply coming from our model so what mongodb does is that when you specify the name of a model in this case is t-a-s-k as a single task it will just pluralize it it will just add an s to it that's why we have tasks here and then to save it to the database so in these tasks right we're going to have several tasks you understand what's going on here all right great so now let's try to save something else to the database so i'm just going to bring up insomnia and instead of saving task one again i'll save task two and then i'll send you see here we now have task two let's add another one tax three and then i'll send task three now let's check the database to be sure that what we actually saved was imputed in the database so i'll come here i'll scroll up here and you see this option to refresh if you click on it it will refresh the database and voila so you see we now have results one of three so scroll down one more time and here you see that we now have three items in our database so we've been able to successfully create an item and save it to the database all right thank you so much for watching this one i'll see you in the next one all right guys so in our crud operation we've carried out the first c that's for to create the data the next is r which is to read data from the database so i'm going to come down here like this and i'll just add a comment i'll say get or read data okay now how am i going to do that well i'm going to create a get request so i'll say app dot get open this up and it's actually going to be the same url here what is making it different is that this is a get request whereas this is a post request and a get request just reads information from the database so i'll say forward slash api forward slash tasks then i would add my callback function but let me make it asynchronous first async and then i'll add the callback function which is going to have the request and the response then let's open it up with an arrow function it's going to be very similar to what we have here so let's do a try catch block try catch block in the try block what we want to do is i'll create a variable called tasks or sorry task plural this time because i want to get all the tasks from the database all right and i'll set it to be equal to remember this is asynchronous so i'll say i'll wait and then i'll then use my model so remember we brought in our model anytime you want to interact with something in your database the entry point has to be your model okay so i want to fetch data from the database i got to use the model so the model in this case is task dots and the method i want to use on this is to find something from the database now if i leave this empty what will happen is that it will just get all the data but if i specify maybe i want to get a specific id or whatever then it will get that specific one but i'll just leave it empty so that it brings me all the data when it has found all the data in our database uh, using this task model what do i want to do next well i want to send a response back to the browser or back to the user and first off i'll specify the status of that response which i'll set to be 200 because it was successful it was okay then i'll now send the json data and it's going to be just this task that we've found in the database so tasks tasks great if there is an error well i'll do response.status 
then I'll just do 500 internal server error then I'll send a message so dot JSON and I'll just have an object with a message property and the value is just going to be the error dot message okay which is coming from this error object here so I believe this is how this is the operation we can carry out to get the task from the database now let's go ahead and test it out so I'll save and then I'll open my insomnia now I, I believe I don't think we've saved this request to create a task because I can't actually find it here let me expand this guy oh, okay I don't think we've saved it so let me just press ctrl s to attempt to save it and I'm not getting okay all right no problem what I'll just do is I'll just copy this URL and then I'll just click here on click to add a first request okay so I guess I didn't actually save it properly so click to add the first request and I'm just gonna paste that in so let's just make this our post requests I'm um, this is taking us back right now post request and in the body we're just going to use the form and remember we just added the name and I think we stopped at task 3 so I'm not going to save any other task I'm just going to save this I think I can just click here to rename it I'm not sure okay settings so settings and haha -ha. so I'll just come here and say create a task and then I'll just hit enter oh I need to select the workspace okay this is looking a lot a lot <laughs> a lot more complex than I used to use anyway let me just click on this X icon okay great so this is it create a task so now to create another request to get all the tasks I'll just duplicate this create a task request and change it to get get all tasks all right and then I'll just create that all right so in this get all task the only thing I want to change is the HTTP method which is post so I've changed it from sorry which is get so I've changed it from post to get because I want to get a piece of data from the database and I don't even need this guy so I'll just delete it all right and then I'll just click on send now watch what happens so you see what happens on the left here on the right here we now have access to the data that is stored on the database so this is it task one tasks two and task three let's go back to this create a task and add task four so I'll click task four and then I'll send so it has added task four now let's come back to get all tasks and then let's fire it off voila so you see now we now have task one two three and four so that's about it for how to get tasks from the database all right see you in the next one then